if we plot the history of the stationary particle? No. Straight line. A straight line. Where? If this is the time axis and this is the x-axis, let's say? The time axis. Along the time axis. Okay? Depending on where it's located, right, it'll be located on the x-axis, let's say, parallel to the time axis. What about a horizontal line? What is a horizontal line? But it's not moving in time. Still located? Staying at the same time. Same time, but? Different More place. different. Than, yeah. So, in other words, it's a particle simultaneously everywhere. Okay? So that's not physics, you know, that we're going to discuss, right? So, clearly there's some kind of asymmetry here in the graph. All right? An inertial particle will be a vertical line along the t-axis, or if it's slanted, what does it mean? With a velocity in this direction. If it's slanted like that, then it's a velocity along the x-axis in that direction. But it cannot be along here without special relativity. We don't need special relativity for that. So there's clearly something about time more here than space. All right? In fact, any inertial particle can really represent itself as being stationary, meaning its world line is where? In this diagram, okay, you put it like this, you put it like this, meaning vertical along the t-axis, okay? So again, we see there's something special about the time axis in this diagram. It's not the same as the space axis. <coughs> Basically, we can say we can represent a, an inertial frame, an inertial particle, by the time axis. Now, why would it not be sensible to say just the time axis alone? I'll just draw a line, a vertical line, or a horizontal line, or any kind of line, it doesn't matter. And I'll call that the time axis. I'll make a line along it. Does that represent an inertial particle? We just said it did. But does it? I'm not even drawing the x. I'm just drawing a line that I call the t. I'm allowed to draw the t-axis anywhere I want. So I can draw it like this. I can draw it like this. I can draw it like that. I draw it. I label it. And then I draw I fill it in with ink, extra ink. That's the line right along the t-axis. Now, we just said that that's an inertial particle. Is it true? Is it really an inertial particle? What? Could be. Uh, OK. It, maybe it could be, right? What's wrong with it could be? Given, given what I said before, what's wrong with it could be? It cannot stop. It cannot? Stop. It has to keep moving all the time at the same... Uh, at well, that's an inertial particle. That's good. Okay, but not moving in space. It's moving only along the time axis. Okay. That's where I'm aiming at. So what does that mean? It cannot accelerate. Uh, it could accelerate. How do you know it can accelerate? If, if the time is the, only, is the only... Okay, so this is the point. If time is the only dimension here, we don't really uniquely and unambiguously have an inertial particle. Because any person who's accelerating in any strange and wild way, like this and like that and so on, he looks at his watch, he counts time, and he labels a time axis. And his time is he's kind of unfolding his watches. He has the old analog watches going around. He's kind of unfolding it along this axis, and time is increasing, right? It is not an inertial particle. It's simply a watch. A watch worn by whoever, correct? So on the one hand, all we need is the time axis to represent an inertial particle. And it's certainly different than the space axis, as we saw before in two different ways. But you do need the spatial axis to give it the right context. Only if you stick in the spatial axis do you know that this line along the t-axis is uniquely, unambiguously an inertial particle. see there's something special about the time axis in this diagram. It's not the same as the space axis.